Jimmy Justice, bare knuckle fighter. Welcome to the Marcus Deegan Show. The Marcus Deegan Show. <laughs> What's the story, guys? Welcome to another episode of the podcast, Shooting from Sticky Paw Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Marcus Digg, and this episode is brought to you by Riz Pharma. Thanks very much for joining us for another sick pod. i got a real badass on the show. He likes to smoke blunts and beat up cunts. Now, listen, we've got a few similar things. We've got tattoos, we've got beards, but there's just one difference. He can kick the ass of guys that are six foot five. I cannot. Welcome to the podcast. If it, it, hey, if you get put down, you've got to stay down. Give it up for Josh. Stay down, Watson. What's up, brother? What's happening? How are we doing? Good, man. Thanks for popping in today. Just, little side note, I don't smoke blunts. You don't smoke blunts? Don't blunts. Just I, joints? I, no, I, I've never smoked in my life. Really? Yeah. You have any vices? Um, alcohol. Alcohol. And getting punched in the face. And getting punched in the face. Do they come together sometimes? They, Is that how it they started? They, they, they really do. They yeah. Do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we were talking before that, uh, you know, we started the show and uh, you're saying that you don't really like to tell a lot of people that you're a fighter, even though, you, you know, you obviously look like someone that to, you know, to the outside world, you look like someone that fight. Why don't you like to tell people that, you know, you're a bare knuckle boxer? Uh, I don't really, I don't like the attention from like people that I don't know. Right. If it's just some casual person, you know, like I don't like to explain different shit where, you know, it's like, oh, well, no, there isn't kicking. No, it's not going to the ground. No, it, it's not MMA. It's bare knuckle boxing, you know, like, or if we're even talking about MMA, they're like, oh, do you, have you ever UFC'd? I'm like, no, that's not, it's, it's <laughs> fucking, um, and I try to give people the analogy of like UFC is like the NFL. Right. NFL is not a sport. Right. UFC is not a sport. MMA is a sport. Mm. And, you know, it's just those like people that don't really know, but they know enough to realize it's popular. Yeah. And they just try to like jump on it and like try to like be cool with it. I'm like, I just don't even want to talk to you about that shit because it's just annoying. So before you got into bare knuckle boxing, had you done boxing prior to that? Boxing, no. MMA, yes. So that's right. I did check that out. About nine years ago, I think, did you start yeah, MMA? No, that's when I ended MMA. That's when you ended MMA. My, okay. My first uh, fight was in 2007. Um, I had uh, 11 pro fights. And do the fucking math, what, 2012, 2013 or something in that area? Yeah. was my last MMA fight. Yeah. And then I took a... You know, a family hiatus. Yeah. You know. Why was, was there a reason for that? I thought I was done. You know, it, it was just one of those things where I was facing, and I'm kind of getting to that same point right now. I'm, I'm facing the upper echelon of people. Yep. And I'm working. You know, I got to pay my bills. Um, mm. I don't. I don't have that ride or the support where I can just train. And get paid to and train. Get paid to train and paid to fight and paid really well to fight, you know. So, like, I'm always, you know, I'm always tr working. Right. You know, and I got to fit, fit it in. And I was getting to the point in MMA where, you know, I was scary. Like, people, like, like you were saying, I look like the fighter. I'm, and none of my fights are boring. I'm always entertaining. I'm, I, you know, I got the knockout power. You know, and even when MMA, I would, you know, big slams, just nobody wanted everybody when they're trying to be on the low level they want the easy easy ride. fights yeah. they want the easy ride through yeah and i was only getting the tough tough fights and, yeah with guys who don't don't work you know all they're doing is training you know yeah and it it's it you know so how do we change it. that how do you change that obviously Obviously, you mentioned earlier on it's about having a name for yourself, right? You, right. you, you said uh, you don't have a name, but you've got a reputation. You're known for the guy that knocked out cold the giant himself, Greg Hardy. Right. But So people will say, oh, yeah, that short, stocky guy with the tattoos that knocked out Greg, ha Greg Hardy, but they won't know the name Josh Watson. So how do you change that? Like, what do you do to change that? I mean, you'd think I mean, that would I mean, be a significant thing to be able to change that, knocking out that big bastard. It is, and, and, you know, like, it's hard because my reach on social media is the people that already know me. Right. You know, like, it, it's hard to extend past that, you know. I had I had one, like, reel that hit almost a million views. Um, but, again, like, no one's digging deep and trying to figure out names and stuff of that nature. But um, even... Even with Greg Hardy getting knocked out, it, it was international news. Yeah. But it was news in the sense of Greg Hardy gets knocked out. Right. Very, very infrequently did they show me being the person standing over him. I barely even got a glimpse. And somewhere in the bottom of the article, they were like, Josh Watson. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, no one read that. Everybody just saw the headline. Greg Hardy got knocked out. They laughed. And yeah. They, you know, moved on with their day. 
is that one of the things in this industry that you kind of have to deal with? Like, you know, it's it's about making a name and being a standout figure in in, in the eyes of the public, right? I mean, I, I think that I would be to the, like you said, I'm that stereotypical looking person. You Scary know? looking dude. Right, exactly. You know, I, I think I have that look to where I should be recognizable and it should be more so, you know, my name should be known a bit more. Right, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess my only hindrance is I'm old. I'm at, I'm at the end of the end of the run, you know, like it's, it's not, a, you know, like, you know, I truthfully think that uh, BKFC would have a whole lot more push behind me if they had another weight class. No, not if I was like 31, not 40. If you were like, th- if you were like if 10, was like years, 10 younger. years ago, you know, cause they know that they can get behind me and they can um, push me and I'll be around for years. Yeah. They know I only have, it's funny cause after, after McElroy, I was already talking about it being my last fight. Yeah. That didn't happen. After Greg Hardy, we know that it can't be my last. Like, I'm always on that cusp yeah. of, like, when's the last fight going to be? And I think, uh, see, they understand that, and they're not really, they're not running with me because they know I'm on, my, on the out. But at the same time, though, you have, like, Ben Rothwell, who's on the out. He's been verbal about the fact that he wants to get a title and be done. And he's been around for ages as well, Forever. right? Right, yeah. exactly. He's only a few months older than me. Right. Um. Most of us former- be careful uh, pushing the foot pedal down underneath you. It's a cough button. So oh, I think that's what I'm touching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I felt, okay, I, I don't get I what felt a- something cutting out, and I wasn't sure what I was it was. Like, I'm what? jumping in now. Okay, let me ask a question. What the hell is a cough button? A cough. So if he needed oh. to clear his throat, he would step down on that. Well, why did you tell me that? Uh, oh, you, he wasn't here when I was saying that I had a cough, and I was no. Rollades. Boom. There we go. All Thanks, right. George. See, no this problem. is my engineer. Now I, thank of course. Now, now, now I know to step on that. Yeah, I was pop. just about to say that there's a microphone no. cutting I, out of I, you. I know what you were. What's going on? Like Did you, could you, you could feel it, right? Oh, yeah. I, I could. I could yeah. have heard it. No, yeah. I didn't know what it was either. Be- the beauty of technology, mate. I right. didn't even know there was such a thing as a cough button. <laughs> Do they have a fart button? Pro- possibly. Where I mean, is that? I, I would assume it's the same button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same button. You never know in this place. Oh, shit. So getting back to what we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like Rothwell has a name, you know, he has a name and a following and people recognize his name and, um, same thing with a lot of these guys that are trans coming from the UFC side and they're coming into BKFC. They're a name and, you know, BKFC is still on like the, the growing kind of period of exactly. Yeah, it's still and I think that they really, really, really believe that the only way that they can uh, reach new customers is by having people from the UFC. Correct. Do you think that the, the sport has grown since big names from the UFC has been coming into the definitely? Yeah, hundred percent. Like you, you can't deny that at all. There, yeah. it's totally grown. Um, you know, after the show in Denver, it's. Then, you know, it's grown tremendously. Problem was... The Denver, was that the Mike Perry one? Yeah. Right. Is that where Connor, when Connor was there? Yes. Yeah. See, yeah. yeah. I was was in the stands acting a fool, drunk as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Just screaming shit. Just trying to to like, just get my toe in there, trying to get that fight with Rothwell. Because I I was supposed to fight Rothwell that night. Yeah. So what happened? I hurt my back. Well, I I say that with, you know, a grain of salt. I always hurt my back. Fuck. Um, That's another thing we have in common then. I, um, ever since, uh, so when I was 16 or 17 years old, I was diagnosed with a, a back disease called ankylosing spondylitis and it's a degenerative discs, you know, and, and it sucks because especially me being big guy, I always run into other big guys who have worked out and whatever, and they just have shit form and whatever. And they're like, Oh, I got degenerative discs. Fuck. You know, you have bad form. Mm. You have just shitty form and just, you've hurt yourself and you've just relied it on degenerative disc. I have a blood disease that withers away my fucking bones. Mm. And I've sneezed before, put my back out. I'll be on the toilet pushing, put my back, like just the smallest little thing and my back will go out of place. Yeah. And and even though my back only goes out of place like the smallest amount, everything goes. Yeah, all the spasm. muscles then pull, all the muscles then pull and then you're kind of leaning to one side. You can't exactly. get comfortable on the bed. Ex- if you take a deep breath, it fucking hurts. Uh-huh. Sometimes you got to hold your arm up like that so it's not pinching a nerve and yep, I yep. feel you, brother. Yeah, no. So uh, so that's that's what I go through. You know, and, and I mean me through almost every single camp, I'll do that. Like it'll happen and you know, that's why I like about that's why I like to know that I'm fighting ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. I hate taking short notice fights. Um 
I was happy to that in the four week notice that I had for Greg Hardy, I didn't get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I went in, I went from zero to fucking a thousand. Like it was, there was no yeah. building into it. We weren't doing shit. I was just like, should I take this fight? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. And the whole time, like the day before I even got offered the fight, I tore my meniscus Fuck. and just did it. Yeah. Just do it's it. kind of like, Alexander Volkanovsky took that fight with Islam on 12 yeah. days notice. And even though he is the fucking goat, he is the man. Even he was susceptible to, you know, not, not being at his full 100% oh, from you, not having a camp. You can't be 100% losing 26 pounds at that size yeah. in 11 days. Well, he's can't. a guy that doesn't lose too many fights. He's a buddy of mine all the way from the UK. I like to bring him in on these BKFC talks because he is part of the British organization. I've never seen him lose a fight yet. And it looks like he had his head punched in on the weekend if you take a look at it. So what do we got here? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Once again, my good mate, the Beetroot King, Jimmy Justice. What's up, Chin Man? Oh, a prime is for pussy, so I got Furiosity right here. <laughs> Check out that body. It's a good friend of mine. Furiosity. Tyson Fury. So listen, Dr. Fury. Tyson's fighting. Oh, you recognize his T-shirt? I did. Mike Platinum Perry was wearing it the other day. I did see Mike Platinum That's... Perry wearing that Justice shirt the other day. I did, Jimmy. Now listen, your mate is fighting. The big Francis Ninganu. How do you think that's going to do? Considering that Francis is primarily MMA, uh, Tyson Fury is arguably one of the best heavyweight boxers of all time. They're stepping into the ring to see exactly how it goes. Give me your prediction, or what, what do you think the deal is with this fight? Um, Tyson will play with him like a kitten plays with a ball of string. I agree. You think so as well? Yeah. Yeah? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know. Gosh, how old are you, mate? Uh, I We're turned, talking about. I, I turned 41 in four days. That's amazing. I'm 40 years old. And um, yeah, I, I feel great. But You feel great? Yeah, the BKFC is uh, <laughs> I feel like for shit. guys our age. Let's face it. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Um, it is. So we, we, were, we were discussing before, Jimmy, that, you know, you've got to make a name for yourself in this industry. Otherwise, you're just kind of like of sitting course. in the middle and floating around. Well, what do you do to try and continually, you know, boost your brand or boost your name so people know who you are? Because I know that you're struggling to get some more fights with the BKFC as well, mate. A hundred percent. Yeah, they're, they're not pushing me either. Um, I'm going to about to get a manager from America. You heard of Jackson Wink? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's going to manage me and hopefully get me a fight in America. Okay. Because, um, yeah, that's what I want. Um, I ain't got long left, but... Um, you know, I'm undefeated in the BKFC, and um, I got some uh, plenty more good nights ahead of me, I reckon. So, what's going on with the eye there? It looks like you, someone's give you a nice little smack, Jimbo. Yeah, I had a, a glove boxing match. It was a clash of heads, a bit unfortunate, oh. really. Right. So I, uh, I went the rounds. It was a, a five round fight, five two minute rounds, and uh, I lost on points, unfortunately. But you know, it's uh, I was fighting the away guy, you know. He was uh, frustrating me, holding on. It was a scrappy fight. I wish I was in the BKFC, you know, because I could have grabbed his head and done something with it, you know? Yeah. How, yeah. how does that go with um, a lot of you guys over there um, with the traditional? Because a lot of the bare knuckle, you, you don't really um, use the clinch, except for when it's a BKFC. Like, I, I've seen a lot of the guys uh, from, like, England having um, a hard time dealing with the clinch. Versus not because you know typically you're not you're not training with that or fighting in that. No, this that's the BKB you're talking about. I've only right. fought for the BKFC, yeah. and um, I'm like you. I used to do mixed martial arts. In fact, I had a big hiatus, like similar to yourself. I didn't fight for mm. eight years, seven, eight years. Same. Um, and uh, yeah, the BKFC. I've I've got back into that, and in, in the meantime, waiting for the next opportunity um and i'm enjoying my training i've done a k1 fight and a glove boxing match just to keep ticking over you know right or to get some ring time in you know but uh i would like to fight i would like to fight a bigger arena than i previously did um or fight in america i'd like to what about that uh, that south africa card they announced Oh yeah, that that could be interesting. Because I mean, or, that, um, that's that's you know middle of the field. You know, like you're not coming all the way over. You you know you're going south, and I'm sure they're going to bring a lot of 
you know, um, uh, people from America there, they'll probably pull from a bunch of different areas. They're not just going to go locally with that. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, shout out Jackson Wink Management. Um, <laughs> let's see what you can do. Have you, have you seen Have you seen Josh's knockout of the big giant Greg Hardy? Uh, Jimmy, have you seen that fight? Greg Hardy's a guy with the dreads, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, they they were celebrating him because he's uh, was he an NFL guy or something? Yeah, he was NFL and he was in the UFC for I think, a like minute, eight or nine. No, he had like eight or nine fights. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. he had a good amount of fights in a short time. <clears throat> the funny part about all that was I watched the contender series when Greg Hardy uh, auditioned, essentially. Yeah. And I was so pissed. I was watching. I'm like, fuck this. I could beat this guy's ass. I'm like, I don't even do MMA no more, and I can beat this guy's ass. And he's just going to get a fucking easy win, and he's going to get run through. He's going to get his contract. He's going to you know, become a name only because he played in the NFL. Yeah. And it's bullshit cuz even watching that I was like I could beat this guy. Well bro, I bet you I bet he was getting paid a lot more money than you were, am I right? I, absolutely. I was my fingers were so crossed that he couldn't make weight. I was really 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 hoping and he st he still utilized the pound allowance. Okay, yeah. Cuz well, I'm glad um, you know that uh that <laughs> fight was a catch weight of uh 295. Yeah, well, yeah. you um, you flipped the script, as it were, you know. Yes, sir. You, you was um, you was the guy that they wanted to to lose that night and build him up, you know. Hundred percent. Uh, and you came in there with that left hook and clipped him on the jaw, and it was fucking lights out. And what a knockout, too! Like, not just a knockdown, not a knockout where he just he didn't know what day it was. No, not at all. And no. you did it with Kyle Mac McElroy as well. Yep. Have you seen him lately? Oh, he looks great. Oh, my gosh. I, well, I think uh, I, I want to say like a month after our fight, he like ran a marathon. Like he just like I think he understood um, he was a smaller framed guy. And he's like, I got to get leaner. I yep. got to get to, you know, fighting guys that have less power because he was, um, you know. A big guy with no power. Now he's a smaller guy with a lot of power. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like that, you know, that that was, you know, that was my initial thing because I fought a majority of my MMA fights at 205. Right. What do you walk around at? I, I'm sorry. Go, go, go Jimmy. Go, go mate. It. Go. Go for it. What's your record in the BKFC? Two and one. All right. That's awesome. And um, you was going to fight Ben Rothwell. I was. Right? Yes. And I hurt my yeah, back. We were, we were talking about it. I hurt my back. And then the pro, like I was saying, like I always hurt my back. Problem was, is that a week after I was back, I hurt my back again. And that one was a little bit more severe, and I was out for like a two weeks. And by the time I was getting better, I wasn't even better. I wasn't back to training. I was getting better. He was already living in uh, Colorado, getting adjusted to elevation. And it just it was one of those ones where I didn't, you know, I was getting ready for the fight of my life. It was, it was going to be the hardest fight I ever had and the biggest stage I ever had. And I didn't want to just walk in and you know, get my ass kicked due to a shitty camp because I fucking, I got hurt. Uh, I hope you get that fight in the future. Um, yeah. So, and I, um, there's a lot of guys from the UK calling out Ben Rothwell. I, they got no chance of getting that fight, but um, I think you're in a good position because of that guy you knocked out. I'm, try, I'm trying, you know, that like I said, they, they overlooked me um, for this card in Salt Lake City, um, mainly because, you know, Todd Duffy... He, he fought in the UFC. He's a name. He's mm. he's um, somebody that, as, even though he hasn't fought in the UFC in a while, you know, it was 10, 11, 12 years ago when he had the uh, record for the fastest heavyweight knockout. Yeah, was he an American football player? Because he's jacked that dude. No, he? no, he was just, he's just gifted. He's just a big motherfucker. And, you know, I've trained with him. I've trained with him because he lived out here in Vegas. And uh, he's he's a great guy. Um, when we've communicated and, you know, through just different um, negotiations and stuff like that, him and I are always talking. And, you know, if anybody was – granted, I said it on – me and Ben were on the same thread on Facebook, and I told him that if he doesn't get – if he didn't get offered a title fight, his opponent should be me. And he agreed and said it was, you know, up to BKFC. But then – um. Uh, Todd got the fight. I'm happy for Todd that he got the fight. You know, he he was actually kind of getting dicked around a little bit by the brass, and 
he was promised a bunch of shit, and then they ghosted him for like two years, and they finally came back and lowballed the hell out of him. So I'm glad he's at, finally getting in there, but you know, yeah. I still wish it was me. I would have preferred it was me. Yeah, Jimmy. What's coming up yeah. next? What's coming up next? When's the movie coming out? Have you heard any more from the BKFC? If you've got another fault, what's going on? Like, what's 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 next in the career of Jimmy Justice? Uh, well, I have just signed my um, my management thing for this uh, American manager from Jackson Wink. Uh, sorry, I can't shout out his name. I just uh, I did speak to him the other day. I, I explained to him that I want a fight in America and. Um, yeah, so see how that happens. Um, Warrior Open premieres in the 11th of November. So I'll be going to New York to uh, watch that and meet up with some of the cast members. Um, a K1 fight, which is being organized in January for a vacant world title. Um, that'd be cool. You know, I, I don't know my opponent yet. Could be that uh, David Viking Samurai guy, David Kazel. Could be. What weight class? Got, what weight class are you? Uh, this would be for eighty kilograms. But um, yeah. <laughs> hey Siri, oh, yes. <laughs> how much is eighty kilograms pounds. in pounds? Yep. One hundred and seventy-five pounds. <laughs> okay. Seventy-six point three seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Siri. You sexy bitch. Hey, well, Jimmy. Um, I always love talking to you, and from now on, every time I have some of large tiki. Wait a minute, some more. Look at that. Uh, Tiki. Oh, it looks great, Jim. Every time I have one of these legends from the BKFC, I'll be chiming in, and I hope you can chime in as well, mate. That's cool, mate. Lovely to meet you, Josh. Listen, mate, I don't want you to put yourself down about your back anymore, yeah? Right? You're a fucking, um, what should we call you? A stoic. You know, um, quit whining. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ladies and la ladies and oh, gentlemen, please. the man himself. Oh, look at the fucking chin on it. Look at the size of that chin. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Justice, everybody. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> See, you later, lads. See you, mate. Keep your chin up, yeah. Always. <laughs> Keep yours up. It's, it's oh, massive. Well. <laughs> I got no choice. <laughs> Got no choice. <laughs> Thanks, mate. He's a mate of mine, a good mate of mine that used to come over here and we used to go to the UFC together. He's an absolute madman, but fuck, he can knuckle down. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, uh, I love, uh, you know, I love talking to the fighters because their mindset's so different to the, what should we call it, the civilian. You know, the civilian right. mindset's completely fucking different to yours. People don't understand the level of um, not only not only dedication that you guys put into in your camps, but what it actually feels like to get punched in the face with a bare knuckle. I mean, I saw what you did to Kyle McElroy pretty quickly too. Right. I mean, it didn't take that long to open him up. I also saw what Greg Hardy did to your eye, which was disgusting, by the way. I paused it and Loved it. had a look. And uh, it, that, that was a nasty, nasty. I cannot believe the cut man let you go back out with that. It, it, you know, it's funny. Like, there was a whole lot of... Uh, it was disgusting, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah but it, 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 like, so... All the cameras for that fight were on Greg Hardy. Because it's Greg Hardy. There were none on me. So we actually can't even pinpoint what punch or what caused that cut for me. We can't... We keep looking at all the film. You, you can't see it. Wasn't a small clash of heads, maybe? No, 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 no. no, no we never... We only one time got that close to each other. But it was distance. But there, you, you can't see what punch causes it. All I know is that um, I clipped him with that same hook that I knock him out with, same exact setup, same exact everything. I hit him with it at the end of the first round. And, that, and that's where you thought, that's where you got your distance and you thought, fuck, this is going to work, right? Did you think that's the sequence I'm going to go again? No, 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 really? no, no not at all. Like, th that is something that we, didn't, me and my coach didn't even work see, on. See, it looked like you did exactly the it, same we, thing did, twice. I and did. it worked. And, and, and it kind of worked the first time, mm -hmm. but then it really worked the second and, time. And it was not even something that we even practiced. Wow, that's like, unbelievable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was just one of those, like, natural movements and um you know i hit him i knew he was gonna get back up but as soon as he hit the ground my coach yelled like uh something like 12 seconds or 17 seconds and all of a sudden there was just a waterfall of blood and down was, your face down my face and i was like shit everybody's coming back to the locker room bitching about being stopped early the 
the doctors were kind of being a little bit, you know, quick. Yeah. Also, they want Greg Hardy to win, so it's more likely that they're going to get pushed to, to, stop, to the, stop the fight for me. Did you know this? Did, this? All these thoughts are running through my head in the ring, and I'm like, get up, 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 get up. And because I was going to throw hard as fuck on him, like, if I had two seconds, I was going to throw, like, you know, just something trying to knock him back down. Yeah, because so he, could... he was already dazed. And right, then... so they couldn't be saved by the bell. And as soon as uh, Mergliotto was like, go, the bell rang, and I was like, shit, went to the corner. Um, and uh, they were going, like, I was fine, I was good, I was good, I was good. Right at the last moment, the corner, uh, not the corner, the cut man, he put Vaseline on it, and he got some in my eye. Back it up a little bit. Was it Stitch? No, back it up a little bit. The first punch he threw at me, he poked me in the eye. So, in like middle finger, I, I have a still of it. It's, so, do you reckon a, it was an intentional poke? No, no, not at all. It was, right. but I mean, it like my eye right now still like to this it's moment. Still, I, I'm you still see still. dots, dots and lines. And how and how long ago was that fight? February. Far out. You get medical from the BKFC? Yeah, but I mean, that's you know, that's whatever. That's that's there's nothing medical that's gonna. Just fix those dots. But um, but so anyway, so I, I fought, you know, the first half of the first round blind out of one eye. You're and up. then, um, so going into the second round, um, I get Vaseline in my left eye. Fucking hell. And I'm like, I, I, I stood up and I'm like, and Mergler is looking at me. I'm like, he's like, what's up? And I'm like, I can't see. And it's not as if you can wipe it or anything, right? Right. And I'm like, I can't see. And he's like, what? And I go, there's something in my eye. And I looked at the corner guy. I'm like, wipe it. And he kind of like brushed it. And I'm like, do it again. And he put his thumb there. And I fucking like pushed into it so that he just smear out the vessel. And, and did I was it like, come out? It did. And I was like, all right, I'm good. And everybody thought that it was funny because like the doctor was on the, on the canvas. Um, my, you know, my coach, Chris, he's like, he's fine. He's fine. And everybody thought the doctor was there. So, like, there was, like, because you couldn't see, hear what was going on. Nobody knew that I got Vaseline in my eye. So they thought that was a bit, they were talking about the cut. They thought they were talking about the cut. And I was, like, and everybody uh, afterwards was, like, you just totally said fuck you to the uh, to the doctor. and was, like, I'm fighting. Because, like, you see me go, like, wipe it away, go, I'm fine. And just walk in and just walk away from the doctor. So yeah. it looked it looked like I was, like, fuck you, I'm fighting, I don't care. Yeah. But I'm, like, it, it wasn't that at all. You no. know, But, uh you know, but I also knew though, like coming out, I was like, all right, I have to do better because he's going to hit this p cut like two, three times. It's going to blow wide open again. I don't have very long to go, so I need to finish this now. Now, how, and now just correct me, how long into the second round was it? It was pretty quick, 30 nine seconds. Was it nine seconds? Yeah. He okay. threw two or three, he threw uh, two naked jabs. Yeah. And then he threw the jab, went for the hook. I ducked under, caught him. Oh, God, have you, have you seen that fight, Austin? I think so. The Greg Hardy one. Yeah. I think, when, when was this? Because my February. dad, my dad watches that. February. February. I think. I think I saw. Like I was walking into his room and I saw. This like, is the guy that knocked him. Yeah. Out. I was like, I know. I, I know you looked familiar. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. Yeah. Is he the biggest man you've ever knocked out, either inside or outside of the ring? Definitely. Um. Because I mean, the 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 catch weight for the fight was two ninety five. I know that he had a boxing match months prior, and I think he weighed like thirty three thirty. So I'd be willing to bet he probably weighed at least two twenty five for that fight six six five six six you know like oh he's uh, he's, he's an huge. absolute I mean I, we somebody took a still of him standing next to me and you know the size difference is you know so a bunch how okay let, let's ask this question could someone my weight and my size knock out someone like Greg Hardy um or does it have to be weight to weight ratio to be able to do it like Def definitely weight to weight ratio has something to do with it. um you know when i came out here um initially uh one of the one of the thai boxing coaches at um syndicate was uh chas malky and he's a known thai boxer and they're him, little those fellas a little thai boxer. He, but he would his fight weight would be 155 he'd walk around like 175 180 and he even said he loved fighting against me because he could just throw as hard as he wanted. And he wouldn't be able to knock you out. Right. He would throw leg kicks as hard as fuck. He would punch me as hard as he wanted. Now, did that hurt when he was doing that? No. I mean, it, it bothered, like the leg kicks bothered me, but like it was just like it was him doing 100% was like the normal sparring rate for. Just guys. say it, just say it, Josh. No, Marcus, you skinny cunt. You'd never be able to knock out someone like Greg Hardy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that. He doesn't have a good chin. Right. He doesn't but have a good chin. How hard did you hit him, though? Oh, I, I, I With hit everything you had? Yeah. Because it was everything. It, 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 obviously, it was a clean shot, yep. but it kind of just... It kind of just no. The, the first one grazed him. I got a good slowdown of it. I'll show it to you outside. Um, but uh, so uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bang! That's right. That's right. Oh, and then then you followed through with a right yeah. hand that kind of caught him on the forearm. Yeah, it was like a, but know, it looked like, like it rocked him as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely helped the scenario. And the, you know, out of all of it, like that was one of the. The best things coming out of it, I think it was, is that, you know, Chris, my coach, is always saying, like, you know, more than one punch, more than one punch. And, and typically when you counter fight, you're throwing, you know, you're covering, boom, you throw back one. And the fact that I had, had three in the chamber rolling, you know, like that was I probably looking at it, that was my happiest point was the fact that. The training was there, and yeah, know, I, I mean, I had saw, he not gone down with the first one or the second one, that third one was still coming. You know, it was still rolling. I saw an interview that you did, and you said, even if I lose my next fight, it doesn't matter because I'm just so happy at what I just achieved right yeah. there. Yeah, pr pr I mean, still feel that way now. <laughs> Jay, you're just in the heat of the moment, yeah, right? De de definitely in the moment thing. Um, yeah, no, like I definitely don't. I'm, I wouldn't be satisfied losing the next one. Um, yeah, you know. Well, there was also one point during the fight with Greg Hardy where Mergl you said something to Mergliotta or he said something to you and you both laughed or both smiled. Can you remember what you said to him? I looked, was watching it this morning. I'm like, Shit. I'm going to ask him what he said. I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah, and, there's and one look. point where you guys kind of said something and he kind of smiled and went like that. And I was going to, that's why I had it actually Shit. written down because I wanted to know what he actually said to know. you. All I know, like the next day in the airport, me and Mergliotta were talking a bunch, you know, yeah. like, me and the other refs and, um, uh, Shook were there, you know, we we're just kind of bullshitting a bunch. Um, Merg, like, if, if I have fight bare knuckle, I prefer to have Merg out of there. He so seems he, to have been, he's, he's been in like two of your, three of your, two, all three, all three, all three of your fights. All yeah. three, you know, yeah. and, he, and he's a great guy and, you know, it makes sense. Like, you have the biggest referee yeah. reffing the biggest guys. Yeah, is he a big man of stature when you see him in, yeah, in face to definitely, face? definitely. Yeah. I mean, I know he he's had to have gone on some sort of diet because he's much yeah. leaner and, and, yeah. and a lot better shape than he had been in, you yeah. know, recently. Yeah. So let's talk about the current state of combat sports right now. Like, um, obviously, we talked about Ninganu and, mm -hmm. and Fury this weekend. Uh, you, you kind of had the same opinion as Jimmy Justice that Tyson's just going to play with him and then maybe knock him out in the sixth or it'll be a TKO in how, the sixth. How many rounds is it? I believe it's seven rounds, isn't it? Give me two seconds. I'll find out. Yeah. Can you find that? Thanks, Austin. Yeah. The um, You know, I've trained with Francis. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when he was getting ready for... Um, Stipe Miocic? No, um, Derek. Um, 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 why am I blanking? Derek Lewis? Yes. So yeah. it was funny. I'm, I'm at my other job, uh, and I had seen that he had, was hitting mitts with my coach, uh, John Wood. And I'm on the toilet, flipping through, and I'm like, oh, you know, Nagano's fighting Derek Lewis. And I was like, Derek Lewis is a big-ass dude. I know that there isn't very many big heavyweights in Vegas, you know, yeah. Vegas isn't known for having heavyweights. Um, so I just messaged him. I'm like, Hey, you need a fat body. Cause at that time, I think I was walking around at like 290, like solid. What are you now? About two, 270, 270. Yeah. Fuck. Um, and I was like, you know, do you need somebody? I'm like, I'm not going to spar with the guy. Cause this is again, back when like I was in my hiatus, I know that he's going to want to have a, a person who like is going to lay on top of him groundwork, you know, just like, a partner to work with who's the same size. I'm not going to go in there and spar with him because Derek Lewis has much more stature on me. Than, I think he's got like four inches on me and he's a much bigger guy. Mm. Um, so it's not a realistic look. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we just, we went and we had fun and it was, it was cool. It was a cool experience. Nice. Yeah. He's a nice guy too, right? He is. Quiet. Uh, very quiet. Um, you know, like in the public kind of thing like that, he's quiet, but obviously behind this, behind the, how many rounds? It's 10 three-minute rounds. It's okay. 10. And it's 10. not an exhibition, so it's an actual yeah, it's professional. An ex yeah. So we'll go on their record. That's the difference, folks, between a not, an exhibition fight and a and a pro fight, isn't it? Is because that in an exhibition fight, it doesn't count on your record. Is that right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's why like uh, people like Floyd are doing all these exhibitions, because like he knows he's pushing the envelope, yeah. and he doesn't want to hurt that 50-something-0 uh, record. 50-0 and 0 it is, yeah. Well, actually, no, it might be 51. 51 and 51. 0 now, I think, yeah. I think the McGregor was 51. 
Um, no, McGregor was 50, and then he went in and fought that little Asian dude, I think, didn't he? I think that was an exhibition. That was, oh, that was an exhibition. I you're right. So. You're right. What do you that's, think about these crossover fights? Do you, do you think that's cool? Like, what about the YouTubers? Is that something that... <sighs> do you, I mean... I mean, if fucking Jake Paul called you right now and said, hey, let's, you would go, <laughs> right? Tomorrow. Is there anyone that you wouldn't fight? Is no. there anyone... There, with, there's nobody that I wouldn't fight. Ever, ever. You would ever. fight anyone. Anybody. Anyone you know, in the world. Anybody. Like, I mean, at, at the end of the day, like, it doesn't hurt to get knocked out. Right. That was going to be also because... You've also been on the other end of it oh, as yeah. well. A big been, man like you has definitely. been on the other end of a few knockouts. Definitely. I'm, I'm, it's funny because uh, they did a countdown maybe like two years ago. Um, <laughs> Were you on that greatest knockouts oh, countdown? No, I, was wrong, I was on the wrong side of it. I was, like, <laughs> I was the number two. Oh, no. I was the number Josh. two. I was the number two, definitely. Uh, you uh, know, like uh, you, it, there was a whole, there was so much leading up to that fight that, uh, you know, a bunch of bullshit. Was um, this your MMA fight? No, this was the, the my debut on BKFC. Okay, that yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, oh, he was yeah. a big boy too, He though. was too, but here's the thing though. Like, here, here, all right, so I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it for a minute. I had an opponent. He kind of looked like a can. I even joked around. I'm like, I should just put my profile and everything on private so you can't see that I'm training with Frank Mir. I'm training with all these big names and all this stuff. But I didn't. And then I find out that he backed out. No real reason, just not taking the fight. But of course, they don't tell me this until they have another opponent lined up for me. They're like, yeah, this is, you know, an opponent to fill in. I'm like, all right. So I did some research on it. All I could find on him that he was like, Four and one amateur MMA, one and zero pro MMA, one and zero pro boxing. And so I'm not like, much, nothing not too much. over I'm the like, top. I'm like, yeah. okay. And when he fought MMA, he fought one eighty five, and I was like, okay. And I watched him his video, and I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, mm. oh, no biggie. Like, I'll take it. Be yeah. Of course, I'm already in camp. I'm already trying to like do this thing, and you know, like, they always wait till the last second to kind of put in that replacement because they yeah. know you're not going to back out. So. Fucking bosses. They're, geez, they're, they're, they're calculated, so, aren't they? So, yeah, oh yeah, totally. So I didn't have any information for him. All I knew was that this guy was getting out of prison nine days before our fight. So I couldn't even promote who I was fighting until nine days out because they didn't make sure he got out. What was he in prison for? Uh, DUIs and okay. possession and stuff. Um, and so... Before the fights, you know, we, you talk to the commentators to give them those little pearls of wisdom to make them, like, seem like they know exactly what the fuck's going on. And, you know, like, you could sit there and be like, oh, you know, what are you going to do off the scratch? Oh, I'm throwing a big overhand right. So that when they're announcing it, they're like, yeah, you know, Josh, we're working on this overhand right, you know. Don't be surprised if when that bell goes off, he throws it. It makes them look like geniuses. When Don't you, they know this shit before you, you fight? You tell them. That's what I'm saying. You, you have I would little, know all that before you, you, you... You have an interview with all the announcers. Right. And you tell them what your what your you, game plan you, is. Well, they ask you questions, right? And, you know, you can, and they and they're very adamant about like this stays between us. We're not telling nobody. This is so that we can look good on camera, right? And so, um, you know, whatever. The fights happen, getting ready to happen. I come out, my opponent comes out. Apparently, during the walkout of my opponent, the announcers announced that he has. He, his amateur boxing record is something like 164 and 28. Oof, that's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Especially considering, I find out later, that apparently it had happened on the Montana prison boxing team. Oh, shit. The last like year, year and a half that he'd be in prison, it was just one big fucking boxing camp. So here I thought I was getting ready for a guy who was like, oh, what's he doing? Shadow boxing and burpees? He can't even be in shape. <laughs> Thinking I'm getting going in to fight some guy. And turns out he's been in a fucking camp for over a year just smashing fools. Now, what does that do to you mentally when well, you... Well, the thing is, I didn't know about it. Until when? Until afterwards when I was in the locker room and I'm getting all these messages uh, from people like, what the fuck's up with that amateur record? I'm like, what are they talking about? And, you know, and I was like, wow, like they fucking set me up. Like I had no idea, and the thing is, the part that sucked is like all of his, all of his videos uh, of his prior fights, he threw all like round punches mm. and like weird, quirky, like whatever. He had and a good he, jab, didn't he? From what I he can remember, he had an amazing jab yeah. cross, and that's yep. the thing is like, that, and that's all it was, right? The fundamentals, and, jab cross. Uh huh. And it was just one of those things where we were just drilling round punches. We weren't really drilling those because again, he's in fucking prison. Yeah, he shouldn't really be, you know, like he's not gonna come up with new tools in prison. 
So the old three two got you. Oh, got it, got it. Hard. The fundamentals got it hard. The old fucking three two. It, it is what it is, you know. Like yeah. you know, and but it, did that loss teach you something and give you something extra to put into your next fight? Maybe like did it or, or it, not really? Because nah, I mean, like it, 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 it would have had it been like my, my only loss or like one yeah. of my. First, I mean, I've lost. You know, like it is what it is. But you your know? de- debut, though, debut right? sucked. That, like that, it, it was rough because I didn't. I just figured they weren't going to call me back. Like, yeah. it was like that was one and done. I'm just going to be that guy who got knocked out. You know, and uh, I'm just happy that McElroy saw the fact that I had a weak chin, and thought he would try and capitalize that yes. and end up getting yes. knocked out. And, and in the, the and first the, round, you knocked him right up against the cage. Well, there was only one round. The ro- we, didn't, the ro- we didn't even get the second but round. But there was one oh, where, where he went back uh-huh. against the ropes there in the padded part, yep. came back, and then it was much – after that, it was it was pretty yeah. much all over. Yep. Yeah, he had cuts was, everywhere. He was bleeding. Oh, he looked stunned. I, yeah. I kind of felt sorry for him. I, I, I'm like – I felt sorry for him in the locker room. I felt sorry like for him. Like, we're sitting there, and, like, all I had, like, I had a little hole right here. And uh, the doctor's like, oh, let's let's get that. I'm like, just do him. Just get him out of here. Like, just yeah. like I feel bad. He's just sitting there sulking. He's just so upset. He just lost his hometown. He's 0-3. And, and the thing is, is, like, he just talks this really, 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 really big game talks a lot of shit and he's you know it's like he doesn't have the fight to back it up yeah yeah, yeah. and uh you know so it, but his last fight he looked fucking good man he, he did look good in his last he's fight. obviously he's gone down in weight classes exactly so i mean like he doesn't have to deal with somebody's power that's way more than his yeah guys i just want to say that today as you can see the studio is kind of the, the studio is kind of decked out with a bunch of big shots stuffies and plushies can you give a wide so guys i got a hold of the guys from big shots and they sent me a bunch of these plushies in to deck out the podcast room we got sugar sean o'malley mcgregor we got all the greats like uh who, who we got the ice man chuck liddell uh alexander volkanovsky how's bula well yeah. <laughs> where's the mini one of hezbollah where's the mini one uh, right below marcus there it is. Hus- Husband was right here. Oh, he should be smaller. Yeah. He should be a miniature. He should. So listen, guys, I don't know if you've seen this, but Christmas is coming up. And if you wanted to grab yourself these, uh, Big Shots has given me a promo code to give to you guys where you can get 15% off any of these toys. And they're reasonably cheap anyway. Um, these guys are official UFC products. So check it out, right? So go on to Big Shots, um, either on their Instagram or go onto their website. Anything that you order, put in the promo code M D S L V Marcus Deegan show Las Vegas M D S L V and you will get 15% off any of these and they're fucking awesome. They're really, really good quality and they're really fun. So big shots guys. They've got all your favorite stars from the USC. Uh, I, re- I remember getting my, uh, I think I had ultimate warrior when I was a child. Yeah. Back cause WWE had the, or WWF had the, it was Wrestle- called WWF back and then. And it was Wrestle Buddies. And all and all the Wrestle Buddies looked fucking juiced up to the hilt as well. Yeah, but I mean, but it was the same. It was the same thing. Well, that was before they uh, they introduced their um, their what is it wellness or some shit where they they supposedly started drug testing everybody. So everybody uh, they lied to themselves and others. Of course, but you just couldn't be like you couldn't be uh, Scott Steiner out there. Oh hell no! He he, he would do bodybuilder poses out there. But Fuck yeah. I mean, but even the Ultimate Warrior, he just Dude, had a physique. Ultimate Warrior was my that, uh, and he used to favorite. have those tight uh-huh. fucking armbands around those fluorescent armbands, yep. and he, he would have the veins coming out of his biceps. I interviewed uh, Ken Shamrock once. Okay, and. Uh, He's another big man back in the day, and uh, the guy's got some biceps and a half on him, that Ken Shamrock. They're really? Huge. Have you ever seen his biceps? No. Oh, they're huge. Unbelievable. I asked him if the vein in his cock was as big as the ones in his biceps. It could have gone two ways. He <laughs> could have been really offended, or he could have thought it was really funny. Me, being the absolute dickhead that I am, thought, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to push forward <laughs> and tell this joke. Thank God it went down well, because if it had, if the alternative probably wouldn't That's be awesome. good, even though he was on by Zoom. But yeah, yeah. that was my oh, personal. Okay. You know who Ken Shamrock is, don't you, Austin? Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, I had a funny story. Uh, we had a show here that tried to start up, and he was one of the hosts. And I didn't recognize him at first. And so I was like, I was talking to his uh, associate and I was like, holy shit, that's Ken Shamrock. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. even old, like he was like, I was like, dude, I have nothing on you. You could just pummel yeah. me. He looked jacked even in his, this was earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, guys are staying fit and healthy yeah. a lot older in life. 
I might as well do that now. A great segue into today's episodes and all episodes this month have been proudly sponsored by Riz Pharma. RizPharma.com. RizPharma.com for all your male wellness needs. If you need dick pills, hair pills, you want to lose some weight, you want to stop your missus from getting pregnant, these guys are the juggernaut when it comes to online pharmacy. And check it out. If you throw the promo code MDS, Marcus Deegan Show, MDS, we're going to give you... uh, 10% 10% off anything that you purchase, rizpharma.com. They got peptides? Ooh. I think that's coming next. Because okay. I need to get some for my Achilles. Yeah. BPC 157. Is that what it is? Uh-huh. For the Achilles? Yeah. Well, it's 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 regenerative uh, for muscle growth. Like growth hormone? Uh, but but more locally. Like, Do you inject it? Yes. Into your stomach, like no, growth? Into your Achilles. Oh, or, really? Or close by it. It's okay. More, it's more of a like a localized... Really? Yep. When I tore my bicep, I um I got on uh, BPC one five seven. For how long? I only did like one bottle. Just and did it make a difference? It <clears throat> did. So I did um I did BPC one five seven TB five hundred, and um, growth just because I needed my arm yeah. to get because yeah. I so I I tore my bicep throwing a body hook, just a shitty fucking overextended just popped it, and uh, wanted to recover quickly and I ended up uh, PRing on bench six months after surgery. So, did you just do growth hormone? Did you do any um, testosterone therapy or anything? I, I, I mean, I do TRT. Yeah. Like, Are you allowed to do that in the BKFC? I, sure. I yep. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't. They don't test us. Um, um, I heard that if you go in for a title fight, you'll yeah. get tested. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, I, I have no shame. I have. I have a history of powerlifting. I have a history yep. of you know. Like after I got done fighting, I got big into lifting. Like yeah. during the pandemic, it was stupid. I got my yeah. bench over five hundred. Yeah, I was walking around like two ninety five with a six pack. Like I looked stupid. Mm. And uh, you know, I once I got through that phase and started going back to the gym. It's just I've been TRT. You know, just yes, I love the juice myself. Just quietly, I've you know, been uh, dabbling with it for many many years. And yeah. for those of you that don't know, when you get to kind of our age, well, even more so my age, but around 40, your testosterone, well, actually, believe it or not, around 30, 30, 30 like 31, 32, 25% really. every year. That no, you're- no, 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 it's not, that, it's not that much. It's uh, 2% every year, like linear. So okay, like, there you go. There's 2%. Me, exactly. So I mean, like, so after 10 years, you've lost 20%. Right. After 20 years, you've lost 40%. Yeah. Um, and once again, it's 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 part of male wellness. It's part of taking care. It's part of feeling younger and feeling better and being able to satisfy your wife. Back in the old days, testosterone was primarily used for bodybuilding, but now um, the therapy that it's used for is to kind of enhance the older male and making him feel like he used to feel boners, right. uh, you know, uh, excitement, and, and even a, even a sense just, of well being, like just like happy. An, just being happy. Yep. Just being happy and not depressed. Uh, you know, like one of the biggest signs of uh, low T is just depression. depression. Just yeah. depression. Yeah. Uh, I remember, uh, shit, going back now 10, 10 years or so, I went to a local uh, doctor that I was seeing. And I was like, hey, you know, run my numbers. And it came back at like 317. And he's like, well, you know, anything under 300 is considered low T. I don't feel comfortable. I'm like, I'm a professional athlete. I'm um, like in my early 30s and I'm 17 points above low on a scale of a thousand. Mm. And you're just going to just say, nah, yeah. like, I'm, I never went back to him. Like, I was like, no. Yeah. I was like, I had, mine was like of an 80 year old man. Yeah. Oh, after, after a pandemic, after I was on just way, way, way too much shit, I, uh, I went cold turkey for 12 days mm. just to see where I was at. Yeah. 187. Yeah. <laughs> It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Well, listen, it, we recommend that if you're going to do testosterone therapy, that you do it through a doctor. Yes. Anything that we say here, we're not recommending it. We are Correct. not doctors or experts. We're just saying it's worked for us. It may work for you. It may not. Go and see a doctor. Don't, don't take what we have to say. For and it. also get and also donate blood. Yeah. Donating. I don't. I don't. But you I should. Yeah. You should. Well, we don't want. We don't want. What's happening overseas in Israel happening here in America, do we? What's that going to do with donating? That if people come in and start, you know, if we need blood. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. But, but um, so, more so, like, um, when you take androgynous hormones, it thickens your blood. So, oh. like, so. Oh, okay. So, this is a, a medical reason yes. to give blood when you're on um, hormones. Yes, 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 yes. Did not um, know that. So, um, like, there's the, the association of like people who do steroids, like oh heart attacks. Yeah, it doesn't have to do with the steroid. Mm. It has to do with the fact that your blood's thickening, 
and your shitty diet of just trying to get big and eating everything under the sun. So, you know, you're, uh, get your plaque and your regular yep. cholesterol in there. So like the thick blood mixed with that causes the heart attack. So uh, what they do is every two months go in, donate blood um, because it's, it's it, they call it an oil change. Wow. Yeah. Because you, you get rid of some of the blood, your body, you regenerates it, yeah. body regenerates it at like the normal rate. Hmm. Um, yeah, because whenever you're uh, injecting um, oil-based hormone into you, it thickens your blood. Okay, I'm definitely going to look into that. Definitely. Um, they said my Achilles was primarily... Age steroid related because obviously steroids do weaken the tendons, um, and and I've never had Achilles problems in my entire life. I wouldn't ever. say that. I, I wouldn't, just I one wouldn't, of those things. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. Yeah, I, I wouldn't because I mean you're not like an overly developed guy. You know, no. like like for me, like when I was like overly developed, I was having like some tendonitis issues. Yeah, so they went in and just kind of like fixed stuff. Like, but that's that's tendonitis. Like, well, hang on, when you say not overly developed, you mean not like. Big. You're not humongous. Right, yeah. You're I'm, not I'm like about 175. Yeah, but yeah. you're not like you're not walking around like Sean Shirk. Right. Remember yeah. how yeah. stacked he was back in the day? Like, you know, <sighs> you're not like you you know, even at your stature, I mean, a lot of bodybuilders are your height. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they walk around at 280 pounds. Right. You know? Lee so, Priest. Yes, exactly. Remember Her, him? Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. He was the man, right? Was. Back in the day. He's Australian too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, like, because that's overdeveloped, you know, like your muscles are so big that it's putting all the pull and, mm. you know, on all your tendons. That That's understanding. You move the wrong way and you pop something. Um, same thing with um, Jamal. Jamal uh, Hill. No, 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 no. Um, I see where you're saying that, but um, no. He, he did I, his I was, Achilles he too. He did too, but I was thinking of an NFL player. Oh, yeah. That, who's that NFL player that just did his Achilles, Austin? No, no it's, not even, it's not even the Achilles. It's um, it's the former running back for the Atlanta Falcons, um, Jamal something, but he his thighs were fucking enormous. Yeah. And it put... Greg Pla uh, Tom Platt's thighs? Yes, yes. And it, it put so much pressure on his knees just almost every single season. Teared, teared something not his ACL but like his MCL PCL LCL like just something would always tear in his knee because his thighs were so overdeveloped yeah. and he just his knees couldn't hold up to the pressure nice yeah it's just yeah. you know is what it is it is what it is but fucking yeah so when when any word when you're back in there mate um, I don't know uh, they I saw when they announced what was it when they when they finally announced the full card or the majority of the card for December second in Salt Lake City? Yeah, the one where Christine Ferreira is the, uh, the the main event. I wish she was the main event. Is she, what is she the well, co main? No, fuck no, they she's not even no, the co. We're gonna give her that. No, she's the champ. I know. I Hang know. On a that. Hang on a minute. What? Yeah, they're not gonna give her the co main. It's right now the way the poster looks is that uh, Mike Perry is. Gonna I be, believe I have the poster. Mike right Perry here. is gonna be the main event. I think. Rothwell versus uh, Todd Duffy is going to be the co-main. Yep. You have Christine Ferreira, yep, and she's going to be the next one. And then you're going to have the next title. Then you have, like, a title fight, which is going to be Kai versus, uh, what's his name, Davis, I think it is. And then you have the, in, um, to fill in for the heavyweight, it's going to be Mick Terrell and uh, Arnold Adams. Yeah, that's weird. Strange that you wouldn't think that they, they would have the champ as the co-main event. Or the main event. That's, but that's, it's that's, weird. That's, that's what I mean. BKFC is all about the names. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I you suppose know. they're trying to grow their business so they want the big names. Right. But, but Christine's I mean, got but, a decent but, name. But look at Denver. Look at Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denver, Denver mm. exact same thing. In that fight in Denver, isn't that where she fought? Uh, Beck, yeah, Beck most, Rollins. Right. Yeah. The first they, time around, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they weren't even third to last. They were. I think they were third to last. Yeah. You had uh, Perry versus... Um, Perry versus um uh, he knocked his teeth, he broke his teeth, or whatever. Uh, Luke Rockwell. Rockwell, and then you also had uh, I'm fucking terrible. Eddie Alvarez this. versus Chad Mendez. Correct. Those were the two. That was the main event, co-main event. Yep. Again, names. names. Yeah. And then you had a then you had a title fight. David Feldman, this guy knocked out Greg Hardy. Get your ass <laughs> happen. Let's get this man another fight. Let's get this man out there. Look, he's got the personality. He's got the skill, and he hits like a fucking Mack truck. Let's get this man back in the ring. Quick sticks. I'm sure he's got fans out there that want to see it. David Feldman from BKFC. Let's get this man back in there. Listen, Josh, before we go, mate, do you have a message? I just want to fight again. That's, you just want to fight again. I just want to fight again. You know, yep. like we're, you know, at the end of the career, you know, we're getting old. Yep, you know, yep. Fucking... 
A few greys coming in. Yeah, they're coming I'm going to use good. the fake spray coming, to get rid of the greys. Fuck, fuck the spray. Mine's no. all grey otherwise, yeah, brother. Yeah. 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 To uh, make some extra money in the Christmas time doing oh, no, right? Santa. I could be Santa Claus. Hey, bro, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank it was you nice having, having a little chat. I do oh, appreciate yeah. it. You. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in once again. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe this episode because the only way that this channel can grow is with you guys. And as you can see, I'm putting out kick-ass content with some badass guests, having some really, really cool conversations. I appreciate everyone for listening, and I appreciate everyone for watching. This is Marcus Deegan. For the Marcus Deegan Show, we are out.